I have three free days between off road trips and I've been desperately wanting to get back in the shop and build something. So today, I'm gonna continue working on our off road trailer. For those of you who've been watching the series and your regular subscribers, I know for sure, you've already picked up on the fact that Nate is using this as a blank canvas for weird ideas. And I like to have a project like this sometimes where it's not just your run of the mill suspension setup or bumper, it's something that's big that you can apply a whole bunch of weird ideas to. And then whenever I build another one of these in the future, I can apply some of those ideas and become a better fabricator over time. So what I wanna to do today is build a big weird tire carrier It'd be nice to build our own latch system and we're gonna start with the hinges. So I've got some builder bushings and some tabs from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. I think we're gonna weld them right here and then we're gonna break out the two bender. I think it would be a good idea to finish weld these corners and do a rough grind before we weld anything on the corner. And that's because right now I have full rain to clean everything up that I can with the angle grinder. But once we weld these tabs on, they could be in the way. I was just about to connect the upper and lower bars of the frame for this tire carrier and I realized that I should figure out my latch system before I get to that step. So what I'm over here doing now is I grabbed a bunch of random material that I had laying in the back of the shop and random hardware and I'm pretty sure I can make a latch out of this. I've never made my own latch. I want to kind of model it after this style latch. I just want it to be more heavy duty. So this is actually U-bolt from uh, Toyota Tacoma much thicker, much heavier duty material. And it's just experimentation, man. I just love to plan out this kind of stuff. So I don't even have a drawing or anything. I kind of roughly can see it in my mind. I'm just gonna start chopping stuff up, putting it together and seeing if I can make a latch. creative process for me is not something that is always the same. This is not a linear process. This is something where sometimes I can draw things out and I can create a material list and decide exactly what to do. But in this case, I want to try to pull from as much scrap material as I can that I've laying around. Because I knew I couldn't be picky on the type of material I was using, I decided to just cut some different things that I figured work together and then lay some stuff out in front of me on the table. And then I can figure out how to join two separate pivot points and make them nest together well. And then I need to figure out how to make a handle.
started today's project, I wasn't sure if I was going to mount a fuel carrier onto this or if I was just going to do a spare tire. But after some consideration while I was working, I decided to mount the fuel carrier. It's something that I've had kicking around the shop for the last few years. I put it up on Craigslist a couple of times, but now I think I'm going to keep it. And this will be an easy way to store extra fuel if I find that I'm on a trip that needs it. One thing that I think is true of everything I build, it always looks way better in person than it does on camera. Like this probably looks okay on camera, right? But I'm telling you, when you're standing there looking at it, just like that Land Rover, everyone who sees it in person is like, that looks so much better in person. My Tacoma the same way, I think that this is gonna fall into that category. Right now, everything is held up under its own weight, even though most of it's just tacked together. Our latch is working and I just have this finger tight. So once we actually adjust it the way it needs to be, you'll actually have to pull, boom, it'll pop open and then this will open up. So with the weight of the tire and the weight of the carrier, I have like no deflection. Even when I pull down really hard on this, it's still, this is pretty strong, especially considering that we don't even have nuts on these bolts. It's all just hanging there loose. So what I'd like to do is to make it even more rigid. So I'm gonna add one more bar right here to make this one big rigid box uh, to help combat the deflection. And then I'm gonna move this little bump stop that I'm recycling up to the top and then add a second one underneath. These are timber and bump stops. These are made for a Toyota Tacoma. I ended up not using them on, on the front of my Tacoma and I'm recycling them on this. But the way I see it, and this is what I was thinking while I was building this, if I have one on bottom, one on top, we use this latch to clamp it down nice and tight and because this is such a heavy duty overbuilt latch, we'll be able to get this super tight. Uh, this should make it to where it doesn't have a whole lot of wiggle, even once we add 90 pounds of fuel. If I put 15 gallons of fuel in there, it's gonna add 90 pounds, which is a whole bunch. Most trips, I won't even need extra fuel, but in case we're on a trip where we do, it's nice to have the flexibility of being able to add it. Now, this, I'm gonna have lots of questions about this. I just mimicked the basic concept of one of these latches you can get on Amazon. And the key is that the pivot point, there's two pivot points. This one goes behind the other one. So it makes it to where if you were to pull on this latch, pull straight up, not the handle, but like put weight on where the latch actually clasps down, it's gonna make this get tighter, not looser. And this is the exact same concept. If you notice, this pivot point goes beyond the other pivot point. Whereas if we designed it to where it was like this, if you pulled here, you could actually get it to open just like that. But since it goes over the other pivot point, as soon as we start to pull on this, it actually makes it get tighter instead of wanting to pop open on you on the trail. Some of you who have been following this series might remember that I built a table that's supposed to fold down on one side and I, it was a little bit too hot. I didn't really like it, so I decided to pull it off and think about the best way to mount it. Well, I've got these special mounting brackets from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. They'll give me a clean way to surface mount some builder bushings on the side of the trailer, and then I can just build some special tabs that will allow me to relocate the pivot point for the table, making it a little bit lower whenever we open it.
made a little tweak last year in the way that I install rib nuts, and that is that I glue them in with Gorilla Glue now. I used construction adhesive for a long time, and I didn't have any problems with that, but Gorilla Glue has such a good bite in my experience, and it even seems to seal pretty well. So, for right now, I'm experimenting using Gorilla Glue to help keep things from spinning once it cures, but if that ever turns into an issue, I will let you know. I'm really hoping that one of you can help me with this next step. And this next step is, on paper, it's a simple step. I mean, I could make this really easy to figure out. The table is lower. The table, we got a nice big five foot wide surface to take advantage of when we get to camp. But we need to figure out a way to suspend it. So we could either just mount a bump stop here. Bump stop, super simple, extremely reliable. Um, but having one like resting point in the middle, I think is gonna make it a little bit flimsier than I would like. So the other option would be what I was originally gonna do, and that is cables. So put a cable from here to there, from there to there, and then that would be great. It would suspend, it would be a little bit more sturdy, but then whenever it goes up into this position, if someone forgets to like tuck the cables in there, I'm gonna have this loop that could like grab branches and stuff going on the trail, and I don't want that. So are you aware of some sort of a retractable cable system that uh, I could mount in here? Because I have like I have room to mount something in here, drill a hole through. It'd be pretty slick to have cables that would retract. So if you're aware of a system like that, please let me know in the comments. I would love to take advantage of something like that. Clearly, in the next episode, it's gonna be a huge episode. We're pretty much done with mock-up. I need to finish the suspension and then finish weld everything, and then we can start painting and doing the wrap on this trailer. So the next one's gonna be huge for those of you that have been following this and uh, you're, I'm sure you're just as excited as I am to see this finally on the trail. Now, Toyota people, I've been at, getting asked to have a Toyota shirt available on our website. We finally have one designed, so if you want to help support the channel and pick up a shirt or a hat or something like that, go to thedirtlifestyle.com where we have a bunch of different merch and we even have our uh, fair leads, the special fair leads that we have mounted on the back of this trailer. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.